change only ever comes when it is demanded. When it is demanded. And if you now know that what lies before you are decisions that have the capacity to lick up workers, lick up your savings, lick up your opportunities and the belief that your children should be able to do better than you. Are you all of a sudden without a voice? Are you all of a sudden without hands and legs? Do you not want to show the same spirit of resilience and creativity that your forefathers showed whether it was in the 30s or in the 19th century in the harshest of times change came only in this country when it was demanded nobody got up and gave workers the right to a holiday in the 1950s just so all through the 30s and 40s you couldn't get a paid holiday in this country and those who are older among us can tell us the truth to the younger ones. The notion of holidays with pay only came in the 1950s. How do you protect yourself if you are only prepared to be willing, listening participants to be herded in a direction? And you know, and I know, that the majority of us when we come out of Parliament on both sides agree that something has to be done and more often than not what we are not prepared to touch because I think there is consensus in this country that we are not touching education in terms of depriving our youngsters from going to university because it really has been the platform to lift people out of their circumstances and healthcare <coughs> only God knows who is the next one of us to get sick no respect of race, class, gender, nothing. One man even told me that Barbados is like in a bush bath. <laughs> and I couldn't really argue with it. And the truth is that after five days of debate, where the government, by virtue of numbers alone, and by virtue of the rules of the house, have the opportunity to dominate, you still do not know where you are being taken by this government. You are in holding pattern. And if I was a wicked person, which I am not, I would say that the holding pattern is akin to an embalming process. <laughs> the truth is that there is nothing that was revealed this week that we did not already know in 2008, 2009, and 2010 estimates. And on every occasion, we as a party sought to point out that there are some structural difficulties that we are facing that may not be leading first to unemployment, but in fact are leading to underemployment. People going on three day weeks, two day weeks, four day weeks. People being asked in the private sector to take a 10% or a 20% cut. All of that, thank you, has endured over the last two or three years. While unemployment itself has gone from seven in every hundred people to now almost 11 in every hundred people. And the cumulative impact is that when that happens for a year, you draw down on the savings that you lost. When it happens to the second year, you draw down again. But by the end of the second, going into the third year, most people don't have nothing to draw down on anymore. And any examination of the newspapers on a weekend in this country we'll see that the number of houses being put up for sale by the banks and the mortgage companies are increasing week by week and month 
I went. I have kept quiet the last few months. But when I went and saw these same forms being filed by one professional financial services inc. You can see the staff are all of them. I don't like them. You know I don't like them. Four of them. In circumstances when a week later the Prime Minister, the only thing you remember about estimates this week is that the Prime Minister said Paris is his pants. A whole week of estimates. And if you ask a hundred days you want to remember, they can tell you that Paris is the Prime Minister Paris. But it now makes sense why in February 2009, remember how long ago? February 2009, two years ago, when I brought the no confidence motion, the same Paris's pal said that it should be punished with laughter. But I suppose pals laugh a lot. So that could be the only solution that he could want for it. And then when I called for judicial management, they said it was madness, it was nonsense. Thompson said that he only needed an oversight committee. He came in the budget in 2009 of May, made a big deal about the establishment of the oversight committee, which we now learn was the MOU was signed on the 12th of May, 2009. Mr. Paris having met with the Prime Minister and his officials on the Friday 8th May 2009. And you learned at Eagle Hall that even though that MOU was to ban dividends, payment of dividends, payment of bonuses, payment of gratuity, payment of any, any extraordinary payment beyond salary, you learned at Eagle Hall that a check dated the 8th of May, the very same day that the Prime Minister met with Paris to conclude the verbal discussions on the MOU, which was signed the Tuesday, so Saturday and Sunday was going to work in this, that a check for $876,000 was written to professional financial services to Mr. Paris in respect of bonus payments. Bonus payments. And because it was a public meeting, I didn't bother to tell you about the $70,000 payment that he got me months before in April. But, you know God don't bring by sin. And you know the overwhelming sense of arrogance that some people have throughout history, throughout history, has been their downfall. Nobody said at all, Mr. Paris. This government was intent on protecting a power. This government was intent on not ordering a forensic investigation. This government was intent on resisting judicial management for as long as possible. And I will show you also here today that it wasn't only Mia Motley and the Barbados Labour Party that called for judicial management since 2009. Would you believe that the Oversight Committee in 2009 themselves Call for judicial and ma judicial management, and it was refused. But when they realized that they really could not control the power, and the supervisor in August 2009 told them, "Do not sell another insurance policy," and the power ignored them 
and continue to sell more than 2,000 insurance policies to unsuspecting Barbados. You get to an insurance company, you can wind it up, shut it down, you work out how much you're earning, and how much you got to pay out, and wind it up, and then you got to see whether they got to pay out cents in the dollars, or how you're going to bridge the gap. Wind it up, stop business completely. Or, you can try to do judicial management, which is to conserve it for now. So you protect the workers in the interim, you protect the opportunity for things to continue going because the truth is, there is not a problem with the life insurance policy. The problem is what they call known executive flexible premium annuities, ESP, ESPA, neither fish, fowl, nor good red herring. <laughs> not protected by the insurance act properly, but it got to be a debt because if I give you a thousand dollars and you hold it for me and you ain't give me back. I know you owe me my thousand dollars. Problem is that a lot of people who did it were mainly older people who got the gratuity after working in the public service for 33 years, 35 years. They were offering interest that nobody else in town was offering. Although I always say that when it looked too good, stay away from it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Too good to be true. And it is still a debt. But it is no sense suing a man if when you get judgment you can't collect. Now the government knows that there are just too many people who stand to be made paupers. Because if I work all my life and my biggest asset Outside of my house is my gratuity. What am I left with if I can't get it back? Right. If I get sick and got to go to the doctor and God forbid, can't rely on the QEH like Mr. Thompson, I have to go overseas. Where will you come from? from? If your child has to go to university because they're not offering a course at UE and have put off two years already because you can't scramble up the money to send them to the States or England. What is to happen to your child? <laughs> if your pension alone can't cover the second mortgage that you take out on the house, that you expected that the interest from these deposits will offset the money you got to pay out for the second mortgage, I haven't been able to pay it for a year because people are not paying you the interest no more. What will happen to you and the house? You understand the human tragedy that is unfolding in Barbados and in the Eastern Caribbean. And worse in the Eastern Caribbean are British Americans. And we keep saying Clico, but we forget that British Americans in the mix too. And in today's paper, you see that people who worked at British America for 30 years or more have not been getting their pension for months. Now, if they didn't have their savings, and God hoped that the savings wasn't in people or British America, <laughs> how will these people pay for food? How will these people pay for road tax? How will these people pay to keep body and soul together? But yet, the government takes 12 months, 12 months, having resisted it for 12 months, it then takes another 12 months to even go to court. And when they went to court Thursday, what did the court tell them? Come back in May. Do you want someone really to be in here? 